Elon Musk's XAI just dropped Grok 3, the world's smartest AI model yet. Meanwhile, Anthropic is gearing up for its next flagship release, rumored to be a hybrid capable of switching between deep reasoning and fast responses. And lastly, the NBA unveils its newest addition to the league, AI-powered robots designed to enhance players' training routines. Let's get into it. So, XAI has officially released Grok 3, and while introducing it in a live stream on X, they showed off some of its insane capabilities, which we'll get into. But first, let's take a look at how it's performing on benchmarks. So, here we have Grok 3 and Grok 3 Mini's performance on the AMI, which is a math benchmark, the GPQA, which consists of PhD level science questions, and a competitive coding benchmark. As you can see, it's outperforming every other non reasoning model out there, like Gemini 2 Pro, GPT 40, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and the rest. I mean, even Grok 3 Mini is outperforming or at least on par with every other model. So these are the non-reasoning models, or non-chain of thought models, but Grok 3 also has reasoning capabilities, just like OpenAI's O model series. As we can see from this chart, overall the reasoning models like O3 Mini, DeepSeek R1, and a few others are performing much better on these same benchmarks. Grok 3 reasoning and Grok 3 Mini reasoning though continue to steal the spotlight and outperform every other model once again. So this is truly the world's smartest AI model, both in reasoning and non-reasoning, or at least the world's smartest released AI model. OpenAI still has the full O3 and O3 Pro behind closed doors that they have only announced so far. But based on this screenshot from their announcement, O3 seems to be slightly outperforming Grok3 reasoning on these same benchmarks, the AMI and the GPQA. I'm sure XAI has a better model in development behind closed doors too though, so it's hard to say who's truly in the lead right now. It's kind of crazy that XAI is even in this conversation given that it was founded in March of 2023. Two years ago, XAI literally didn't even exist and now it is pushing the frontier of AI capabilities. Anyway, I will show you guys this clip of Grok3 reasoning in action now, but if you want to know more about this Grok3 release, I made an entire video covering it that I'll pop up on screen right now. I get into its new agentic capability its ability to truly generalize according to the XAI researchers, and more. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Now, here is the clip of Grok3 Reasoning, writing the code entirely from scratch to simulate a rocket launch from Earth to Mars and then back to Earth. Check this out. All right, so this was the, the little physics problem we had. Um, you know, we, we, we've collapsed the thoughts here, so they're, you know, they're hidden. Uh, and then we see uh, Grok's answer below that. So it explains, you know, it wrote a Python script here using matplotlib. Uh, then gives us all of the code. Um, so let's take a quick look at the code. You know, seems like it's doing reasonable things here. Not not totally off the mark. Um, solve Kepler sa says here. So maybe it's solving Kepler's laws. Kepler's, Kepler's law numerically. Um, yeah, there's really only one way to find out if this thing is working. I'd say let's let's give it a try. Let's run let's run the code. Mm -hmm. All right, and we can see. Um, yeah, Grok is animating you know, two different planets, Earth and Mars. Here and then the the green uh, ball is the the vehicle that's transiting the, the spacecraft that's uh, transitioning between Earth and Mars, and you could, you could see the journey from Earth to Mars and it looks like yeah indeed the, the astronauts return safely you know at the right moment in time. Um, so now obviously this was just generated on the spot, so you now we can't tell you if that was actually a correct solution. So we're going to take a closer look. Now maybe we're going to call some colleagues from SpaceX, ask them if. If this is legit, um, yeah, it's pretty close. It's, it's, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 com there's a lot of complexities in the actual <laughs> orbits that have to be taken into account, but this is, this is pretty close to, to what, it, what it looks like. Awesome. Um, so, this model is looking really good, but I'm curious, has anyone here actually tried it yet? If so, what did you think? And did it actually feel like the world's smartest AI model? Let me know in the comments. Now, moving on, Anthropic looks to maintain its spots among the top AI companies with a major upcoming model release. Will it measure up to the ranks of Grok3 and O3 Mini though? I guess we'll have to wait and see. According to the information, AI startup Anthropic is gearing up to release its next major AI model. The report describes Anthropic's upcoming model as a hybrid that can switch between deep reasoning and fast responses. The company will reportedly introduce a sliding scale alongside the model to allow developers to control costs as the deep reasoning capabilities consume more computing. So this would be an interesting approach, having some kind of sliding scale that gives you precise control over how much reasoning you want the model to do essentially. 
As you may recall from my last video, OpenAI on the other hand is exploring the idea of a unified model that just handles everything, from trivial queries that require little to no thinking, to super complex queries that require minutes of deep reasoning. But as one of my viewers smartly pointed out, how can we trust that OpenAI's unified model will accurately discern how much reasoning or speed a particular query requires? That is why, at least for now, having the option to control these things is extremely important. And I think Anthropic is moving in the right direction here, but let me know you guys think down below. Now, this model, which could arrive in weeks, reportedly outperforms OpenAI's O3 Mini model on some programming tasks, and excels at analyzing large code bases and other business-related benchmarks. So I'm definitely looking forward to this model release, and of course, I will update you guys if we get any new information. Now, this wasn't the only news from Anthropic this week. As it states here, Anthropic signs MOU with UK government to explore how AI can transform UK public services. This MOU, which stands for Memorandum of Understanding, is essentially just an agreement between Anthropic and the UK government that outlines their intentions to work together. The collaboration will focus on the potential for Anthropic's advanced AI model, Claude, to enhance how people in the UK access and interact with government information and services online. It will also establish best practices for the responsible deployment of frontier AI capabilities in the public sector. So this is a huge win for Anthropic. They've officially secured their position as kind of the UK's go-to AI partner for policy and public sector AI integration. This will also deepen their partnership with the DSIT, UK's Department for Science, Innovation, and Technology, which will open up additional opportunities to explore several areas of shared interest, such as advancing scientific progress with AI by combining Anthropic's capabilities with existing UK strengths in R&D and data, securing the supply chain for advanced AI and the UK's future infrastructure, and boosting the innovation economy with Anthropic's AI systems and tools, supporting the UK's world-leading startup community as well as universities and other organizations. So again, massive win for Anthropic here. And honestly, their safety-first approach to AI development seems to align quite well with the UK's ultra-cautious stance on AI policy. Speaking of Anthropic safety focus, they recently ran a jailbreaking challenge, offering cash prizes to anyone who could bypass Claude's safety guardrails. And well, the results are in. Here's Jan Like, an Anthropic researcher who shared the following update. After five days, over 300,000 messages and an estimated 3,700 collective hours, our system got broken. In the end, four users passed all levels and one found a universal jailbreak. We're paying 55k in total to the winners. So this is pretty wild. It only took five days for people to beat the challenge and one guy even found a universal jailbreak, basically a master key that lets him bypass Claude's safety guardrails entirely. Obviously, that's not great news for Anthropic, but the silver lining here is that running challenges like this lets them learn from these exploits. They can now patch them and make their models even harder to crack next time around. In other AI news, Perplexity introduces Perplexity Deep Research. Today, we're launching Deep Research to save you hours of time by conducting in-depth research and analysis on your behalf. When you ask a deep research question, Perplexity performs dozens of searches, reads hundreds of sources, and reasons through the material to autonomously deliver a comprehensive report. It excels at a range of expert-level tasks, from finance and marketing to product research, and attains high benchmarks on humanity's last exam. So this is pretty much the exact same thing as OpenAI's Deep Research Agent. I mean, they didn't even bother changing the name. Now, as they mentioned, it performs well on humanity's last exam, a comprehensive benchmark for AI systems consisting of over 3,000 questions across 100 plus subjects, ranging from mathematics and science to history and literature. But OpenAI's version still has the edge. As you can see, OpenAI's deep research agent is scoring roughly 26%, while Perplexity's deep research comes in at 21.1%. Notice also that pretty much no other company has an agent like this besides OpenAI and Perplexity. To be fair though, with XAI's new Grok 3 release, they did announce Deep Search, which is essentially Deep Research, but we have yet to see its score on this exam. The main difference between Perplexity's Deep Research and OpenAI's agent though isn't just performance, it's the fact that Perplexity's is available for free. As I said here, we believe everyone should have access to powerful research tools. That's why we're making Deep Research free for all. Pro subscribers get unlimited Deep Research queries, while non-subscribers will have access to a limited number of answers per day. So overall, this release is undeniably impressive, but is it truly as impressive as it seems? Well, if we take a look at how people on X have been reacting to it, for example, this biomedical scientist and human immunologist, Daria Unutmaz, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, shared his thoughts. I've been testing Perplexity Deep Research, and I can confidently say it's maybe 10% as good as OpenAI Deep Research. I don't understand the massive hype, it's just not justified at all. And this is just one example, there have been many others echoing the sentiment. In fact, a lot of the reviews 
reviews have been surprisingly critical, even though this is a free product. But anyway, still an impressive release. It seems like we're moving more in the direction of just having the AI do the research for you instead of using AI tools to enhance your search. Now, there was another AI agent release from last week that I somehow only found out about very recently. I can't believe I missed this, but here is the Replit agent, an AI agent that literally creates entire apps for you. Check this out. You always wondered why that app didn't exist. Now you can make it. Meet Replit Agent. Want a custom workout plan? Make an app for that. Have a great idea at 2 a.m.? Make an app for that. Need to run an analysis? Or learn with your kids? Make an app for that too. This isn't just making apps. This is your imagination unleashed. Describe what you want and watch it come to life. No coding experience right from your phone. Made an awesome app? Share it with a friend. Have a business idea? Start in minutes. Everything you need is in your hands. Now is the perfect time. Create something amazing. What will you make today? Try it free at replit.com. So it looks like pretty much anyone can create their own apps now if they wanted to. Sure, they won't be top tier apps, but keep in mind, this is the worst this agent will ever be, and we've all seen before just how fast AI progresses. Now, in the world of robotics, AI-powered robots are finding more and more ways to be useful. First it was factories, and now it's on the court. Yeah, at first it was definitely weird, having all these robots moving around and doing stuff. But they just become part of the day-to-day. -day. These robots can replicate any of them. I just treat them like any other player. Get the f out of here. Give me another one. It's time to get swole. This guy makes me feel like Luke Skywalker. He's like my R2. Isn't that right, K? That's right, Big G. See? They don't take breaks. They don't need water. It makes you want to go harder. It definitely pushes our practices to another level. So you get the idea, the NBA introduced four AI-powered robots in total, all for different tasks, from passing to players in a drill, to running defensive schemes, to even just providing companionship to the team. We've only just scratched the surface of what's possible with AI-powered robots. There are endless potential use cases for these things across literally every area of life. It feels like embodied intelligence, or physical AI, whatever you want to call it, is set to have its own ChatGPT moment at any second now. What that will be, I'm not exactly sure, but people are definitely sleeping on it. Now, in other robotics news, Booster Robotics decided to push its latest humanoid robot, Booster T1, to its limits. They tried everything from breaking a glass bottle over its head, to sledgehammering it, to even beating it with a stick. As you can see, it manages to withstand these brutal attacks, showing its incredible resiliency. Now, while this resiliency is extremely impressive, I just hope Booster T1 doesn't actually remember any of this. Otherwise, this guy is screwed, and who knows who it'll come for next. So, with all these rapid advancements in AI-powered robotics, huge companies like Meta are starting to want in. According to this Bloomberg article, the company is making a significant investment into the category, futuristic robotics that can act like humans and assist with physical tasks, and is forming a new team with this reality lab's hardware division to conduct the work. They will focus primarily on household chores, and their bigger ambition is to make the underlying AI, sensors, and software for robots that will be manufactured and sold by a range of companies. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on Meta's robotics team. Also, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of other big tech companies hop on this wave as well. Now, to end off the video, there was one more piece of news we have to cover. Google's video model, VO2, is coming to YouTube Shorts. You can now create entirely AI-generated shorts directly on YouTube from a single text prompt. Anyways, that is all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.